Sorry. Good afternoon. My name is Ira Sneed. I am the president of Pembroke School District 259 Board of Education. On behalf of our superintendent, Dr. Marcus Alexander, and on behalf of our school principal, Mr. Kevin Johns, and our board members, of which I have three board members here today, Ms. Cleedy Butler, Ms. Tanya Lafitte, and Ms. Stacy Noble. We welcome Lieutenant, Lieutenant uh, Stratton and members of the Illinois General Assembly and all of our local elected leaders. Now please help me welcome our governor, Mr. J.B. Prisker. Well, thank you very much, Mr. President, uh, for welcoming us here today to Pembroke Community Consolidated Schools. Uh, and I want to also thank uh, Representative Anthony DeLuca and Pembroke Township Supervisor Brenda Miles and Hopkins Park Mayor Mark Hodge, uh, all of whom uh, have been very gracious uh, in welcoming us to, well, your territory. Uh, I also want to extend my very uh, significant appreciation to Dr. Jafunza Wright Carter and to Fred Carter, co-founders and leaders of the Black Oaks Center. Uh, all of us have something to learn from your mission, and it's really a blessing to share your teachings so widely, and I thank you for that. I'm very proud to be joined today also by Evera Ivy, the CEO of Ivy League Farms, and by Lajobi Mosley with Lion Construction. The Illinois Legislative Black Caucus has been the bulwark of advances in equity that our state has made this spring. And today, we're joined by many of its members and leaders. First, Lieutenant Governor Juliana Stratton, who was once a member of the Illinois Legislative Black Caucus, uh, and now is my partner in governing the state. Um, we're also joined today by the co-sponsor of the Economic Equity Pillar, and that's ILBC Joint Caucus Chair, Sonia Harper. Thank you for your leadership, Representative Harper. And we have also with us uh, Leader Jackie Collins and Senator Chairman uh, L.G. Sims, uh, and I very much appreciate their leadership in Springfield and their partnership as well. And though he could not be here, I also want to recognize Senate co-sponsor of this bill, Christopher Belt, uh, who's from the Metro East area, could not make it for this press conference today, but has been instrumental in getting this work done. Thanks for the courageous and uh, creative vision uh, of the Black Caucus that this package of legislation, now law, delivers such wide sweeping progress that it's nearly impossible now to cover it all at once in one press conference. But to be clear, I believe in getting big things done. And I'm so proud to have been a partner and to be here today as someone who has signed this bill into law, uh, making the advances that the ILBC has really pushed for uh, since last summer, but I must say for decades, truly. That's also why I'm very proud to spread the word about what this pillar has means uh, for our black rural communities and for our black farmers in particular here in Pembroke Township, uh, a community whose storied past testifies not only to uh, the racism and violence that we seek to rectify, but also to the resilience and the hope that we celebrate today. Thanks to these new laws, the Illinois Department of Agriculture will conduct a disparity study to determine economic and other disparities associated with farm ownership and operations in this state. And that means looking at the economic opportunity, land ownership, education access, and other disparities between black and white farmers in Illinois. And in less than a year from now, they will deliver their findings to policymakers and to the public 
and to me so that we can take further action on their work. We all know that history, culture, and yes, federal and state policies of the past have decimated once thriving black farming communities. But current policies and programs aimed at socially disadvantaged farmers are based on presumptions of need without in-depth knowledge of the challenges, the utilization of resources, and the interest of socially disadvantaged groups. By directing the Department of Agriculture to commission this report, we're delivering Illinois a unique opportunity to understand the unique obstacles in our path toward economic justice in the farming community, and then we can address it. This is a monumental opportunity to help ensure that we're building equity and generational wealth for black farmers in the agriculture industry. And I'm very proud to partner with the Black Caucus in turning this great accomplishment into law. There's so much to be proud of in this law, and each of our speakers today will highlight a different feature of this very important ILBC pillar. I want to just say, before I turn it over to our next speaker, how important the ILBC's pillars are to the future of our state. The Illinois Legislative Black Caucus, uh, in the wake of the murder of George Floyd, in the wake of the murder of Breonna Taylor, uh, in the wake of, frankly, decades, centuries of racism that black people in this state have experienced, uh, that uh, they are carrying us forward. They took those lessons and they have carried us forward with real power, influence, um, that, they, that they share in state government today. And they, at the end of the day, in the session in January, they brought, over the course of that six or eight months, their experiences, the testimony of so many people across the state, and the will of the majority of the people of Illinois to bear, to put these pillars on the desk of the governor. And I am so very, very proud to sign these pillars to be a part of what the ILBC has done and will do going forward. With that, I'd like to turn it over to our terrific Lieutenant Governor and the Chair of the Governor's Rural Affairs Council, my partner, Juliana Stratton. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you, Governor Pritzker, for that kind introduction and for your commitment to equity and uplifting every community in our state. To my friends and former colleagues of the Illinois Legislative Black Caucus, thank you for the four pillars. Spurred by the murder of George Floyd, and we know that the trial of Derek Chauvin begins today. And so I pause just for a moment to acknowledge his family and lift them in prayer as I know that this is a painful day for them. The perseverance and bold leadership of the Illinois Legislative Black Caucus to uproot systemic racism in our state is quite remarkable and it is already making a difference. I especially want to acknowledge Chairwoman Harper, Senator Collins, and Senators Belts and Peters in their absence for your steadfast determination as bill sponsors. You stayed the course, you never gave up, and you are the reason we are here today. To all of the dignitaries and special guests, which have already been acknowledged by our governor, thank you for being valued partners in the fight for justice, equity, and opportunity for all. And I do also want to acknowledge President Sneed, Superintendent Alexander, and Principal Johns, and the entire team here at Lorenzo R. Smith uh, Sustainability and Technology Academy. You welcomed us so warmly today. Uh, thank you for hosting us and for all that you do for the young people in our state. Just last week, I was in Pembroke, albeit virtually, for a town hall hosted by Chairwoman Harper, to discuss equity in agriculture, land access, and economic development. I was honored to listen to and learn from the leaders in Pembroke Township, those who are familiar with a narrative that so many black, brown, and indigenous families have experienced in our state as it relates to agriculture. Of course, it's even better for me to be here in person, and I look forward to coming back in the very near future to visit with all of you. 
Pembroke is an area that is steeped in rich history with some truly brilliant and resilient people. A town founded by formerly enslaved people who cultivated the land and uplifted hope by establishing a loving and nurturing community, a legacy which exists to this very day. Today's celebration of the economic equity pillar that Governor Pritzker signed into law last week honors the legacy of Pembroke Township founders and black farmers like my ancestors, while at the same time bolstering the future of black farmers in our state. See, in America, systemic racism is embedded in our economy and the agricultural industry is no exception. Pembroke Township was once the largest black farming community in the North, supplying fresh food and produce to urban areas like Chicago, Detroit, and Cleveland. Yet the story of black farmers here in Pembroke is no different from the stories of so many who no longer own the land. Well, what do I mean? Well, in 1920, there were close to one million black farmers in the United States. And today there are fewer than 45,000, and that land loss is reflected across BIPOC communities. Whether it was toiling the land on plantations during chattel slavery, or sharecropping and producing but never really owning the land, or racialized violence that pushed us out of the South and out of small towns throughout Illinois, often known as sundown towns, or being excluded from federal loans and other programs that would help us start, expand, and save our farms, we have to face the often brutal history of why we work the land but no longer own or have access to the land. In Illinois, it's time to repair the harm, to lift up our farmers of color, and to bring true equity to our state's number one industry, agriculture. And the economic equity pillar signed by Governor Pritzker is truly justice in action. As chair of the Governor's Rural Affairs Council, I'm especially excited about the provisions of the Farmer Equity Act, which will take a data-driven approach to disparities in farming in our state. And this data will be used to promote land ownership, income generation, and wealth building for those who have been historically left behind. I look forward to working alongside Governor Pritzker and the Joint Black Caucus and all of you an implementation, and I am proud of our state for making such strides towards equity and inclusion. It's now my honor to introduce my former seatmate in the Illinois House and my friend, who now chairs the House Agriculture and Conservation Committee as well as the Joint Legislative Black Caucus, Representative Sonia Harper. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor Stratton and everyone. The Illinois Legislative Black Caucus is proud to stand here today along with Governor Pritzker, Lieutenant Governor Stratton, Pembroke Township Supervisor Brenda Miles, Mayor Hodge, Senator Sims, Baba Fred Carter, and Dr. Jafunza Wright, all of our local community leaders and advocates. As we are here today celebrating the signing of our third pillar as part of our agenda to address systemic racism here in the state of Illinois. Now this pillar was so expansive, um, it had to be broken down into four different bills worked on very diligently by your members of the Economic Access, Opportunity and Equity Committee of the Illinois Legislative Black Caucus, along with my co-chair partner, Senator Chris Belt. When you think about the economic needs of communities like Pembroke Township and similar to the ones that I represent back home in Chicago, there are, there's much evidence of a need for a drastic infrastructure redevelopment, the lack of quality housing, the need for more businesses and services. These set of provisions today just signed into law are a very important step in reversing some of those detrimental setbacks that many of us have experienced in our communities for far too long. These, this measure will help to even the playing field for so many people in our state. And while we do have so much more work ahead of us, these new laws are truly an achievement and a definite leap in the right direction for providing economic equity for black communities across the state. From this package, we are now ensuring fair wages for black workers on their jobs and helping to end wage disparities for black women, men, and people with records.
We are now requiring businesses in Illinois to track and report wage data categorized by race and gender, and we are penalizing companies a percentage of their profits for not closing wage gaps based on race and gender. It is now considered, thank you, it is now considered a civil rights violation to refuse to hire someone simply based on a criminal conviction, especially if that conviction has nothing to do with the type of job being sought. These new laws help to address the shortage of lending institutions making investments in black communities and provides new opportunities for black banks and community development and financial institutions with new policies from our state treasurer's office. We are protecting working families by capping predatory payday loans at 36%. We are also concerned about promoting economic growth and recovery, and we have now created an African Descent Reparations Commission. This measure, which was spearheaded by Representative Will Davis, helps to advise the General Assembly on ways that we can ensure equity, equality, and parity for African American descendants of slavery within this state. <laughs> Communities similar, similar to Pembroke Township all over the state need more support for their local businesses. The Legislative Black Caucus wants to make sure our black business owners have the tools they need to succeed and compete in this global marketplace. So this new law helps to provide more funding for small businesses, for innovation research, and more support for business incubators and accelerators. We are also making sure the state meets its business enterprise goals by making sure that minorities actually have a fair chance to do business with the state of Illinois by creating the Commission on Equity and Inclusion. We are looking forward to the results of the Black Beauty Supply Disparity Study, a measure spearheaded by Representative Debbie Myers Martin that will address the lack of black ownership in the black beauty supply manufacturing industry. I am very much looking forward to the disparity study for black farmers and growers to figure out how we can help black farmers in Illinois in a meaningful way while boosting our local healthy food production and local economies. More people are dying in my community from preventable diet-related diseases prematurely more than any other cause. Eliminating food deserts and growing local healthy food systems and economies across the state, especially in our black communities, remain among our top goals, as well as addressing land loss and other barriers that keep black farmers from taking their proper place in the state's top job producing industry. I've spent the past five years of my career amplifying the food access, agriculture, and economic related needs of our black communities across the state as the first black chairman of the House Agriculture Committee. Way before I was a legislator, when I was just a single mother working on an urban farm in West Inglewood, I came and spent time in Pembroke Township. It was then that I learned that it was once a powerhouse in agriculture. And with the rich human, as well as natural resources we have here, when organized and supported properly, we can return to being leaders in the agriculture industry while taking advantage of new partnerships, new technologies, and building new opportunities for our future generations. I've also come to learn that my family is from Pembroke Township. My great-grandmother Agnes Strong was a strong pillar of this community who believed in serving her fellow neighbors. You see, we are all connected. Thank you. You see, we are all connected in some way or another here in this state. Our success sometimes depends on the success of one another, as we are more likely to partner and share our resources within our own communities more than others are willing to share with us. So we've been all across this state sharing the work of our historic legislation past, but it won't mean anything unless we're able to do the necessary work together afterwards to bring about the changes that we need. So let's all promise to do that work together here in Pembroke Township and in all black communities across the state as we work to ensure economic access, opportunity, and equity. I'd like to thank a host of advocates, constituents, and staff who has helped to bring us here to this day and now I'm pleased to introduce to you all Senator LG Sims thank you good morning 
Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Y'all know me. Good morning. That's right. It is a great day. You know, this is, this is an amazing day to be here with you all to celebrate this momentous occasion. You know, when we set out to create these four pillars, the Illinois Legislative Black Caucus didn't just want to respond to the, the death of George Floyd. It's, this was much, much bigger. This was an opportunity for us to set a course for the state of Illinois for, to be the example for the nation for progress in education, progress in health care, progress in criminal justice, and progress in economics. I want to thank our partner, my friend, Governor J.B. Pritzker, for having the fortitude to stand up and say equity has a place here in the state of Illinois. But I've also got to thank my former roommate in the Illinois House of Representatives, Lieutenant Governor Stratton. who has never been shy of talking about equity in this state to the people of Pembroke Township. Now, I don't represent you. You are not represented by a member of the Illinois Legislative Black Caucus. But as I, when I come here, I often say to the people of Pembroke Township, you are never outside of my heart and outside of my thoughts. And this is proof positive that the Illinois Legislative Black Caucus, even though a member of one of our caucus does not represent you, we represent every place a black person resides in the state of Illinois. So we want to make sure that economic equity comes here just like it goes anywhere else. So we have never forgotten about you. You know, A. Philip Randolph once said that freedom is never given, it is won. So you cannot, we have every day we have to be committed to ensuring that freedom happens in every corner of this great state. You know, I, I think where we are in this, in this moment, if, if you will forgive me, in this season of Easter, you know, yesterday we just celebrated Palm Sunday, and you know, hope is one of the most powerful emotions that one can have. However, the word tells us that faith without works is dead. So in order for us to have the, the invest in hope, we have to act. And the Illinois Legislative Black Caucus, we believe in action. As we watched, as with so many others, the horror of those eight minutes and 46 seconds as George Floyd was, was killed, we couldn't, as, and, and we saw across the state, whites joined us, whites, our white brothers and sisters joined us in calling for change. And we came together to set out an, a, set out an agenda that focused on economics, focus on education, focus on health care, but also focus on criminal justice reform to make this state more progressive, make this state more prosperous for everyone. Now, we have made great strides, but I commit to you right now, we are not done. We will continue. <laughs> we will continue to make this state equitable and prosperous for everyone. You know, as, as uh, Governor Prisker and Lieutenant Governor Stratton and Representative Harper were talking, I just, I was thinking back to those moments when we passed this moment, momentous piece of legislation. And I remember watching my friend, Senator Chris Belt, who led this pillar in the Illinois Senate, an, indiv a, in, an individual who's been a friend of mine for years. I saw, I watched him, you know, as he worked members, on, he worked with members on the floor to talk about this, talk about this, these pieces of legislation. I watched Senator Jackie Collins and her, de her dedication and commitment to equity in this moment. See, when you, when you know what the sting of inequity feels like, you can display that and you can talk to others about that. You know, as we talk about the particular as it relates to economics, working for and working on land from which you cannot reap the economic benefits, that, it, we, that can simply not happen. That's why this economic pillar was so critically important. Because we want everyone to have the same access to opportunity as everyone else. We know that this is not the last stop on this reform journey. 
and we want you to know that we stand steadfast with you, ready, willing, and able to make sure that we are making a difference on behalf of the t more than 12 million people of the state of Illinois, particularly those who have locked, been locked out of opportunities and locked into conditions for far too long. This economic pillar does just that. It brings equity to our communities, particularly those who have been left behind. We have never forgotten about you, Pembroke Township, and we never will. Thank you for so much for having me, and now it is my honor to bring forward the Joe B. Mosley to the podium. Well, hello, everyone. And um, I take it as a privilege to be able to speak here today. Uh, most of you know me. Um, some of you don't. And uh, as for the ones that don't, I'll briefly explain uh, what we do here in Pembroke Hopkins Park. Although um, I'm not here on farming today, uh, I do come from a farming background. Uh, raised here in Pembroke, uh, and I can tell you every animal that you could think of, we've had it. And I was the guy that took care of it, from picking the peas, from the corn, I mean, from feeding. I hate to talk about it. It was my childhood life. But nevertheless, I entered into um, construction, um, heavy highway building. Uh, right after high school, I built houses for a few years, transferred over into heavy construction highway, worked for one of the biggest companies here in the Kankakee area as their foreman, and um, eventually I decided to start my own business. 2007-2008, uh, when the Dan Ryan was redone, uh, we went and worked on that pro project with a big construction company, Walsh Construction at the time, and that's when I realized uh, the need when it came to training and helping um, people that looks like me in the construction trades. Um, we took that project, we were able to grab a lot of guys out of the community, brought them on the job site, and to this day, I don't believe our record was ever beaten. In fact, uh, we was awarded an award from IDOT for that project. But that uh, inspired me from that point forward to start training uh, individuals in the construction trades. Uh, we started uh, a school, it was registered with the Higher Board of Education, where we can train in over 21 different construction trades. Um, we've also, uh, I network with um, a union where we have apprenticeship programs and over 19 different construction trades uh, that's registered with the United States Department of Labor. So we have the ability that we could take an individual that's serious about construction, bring them in, sign them up into our school, put that guy on a live construction site, and we can do that anywhere in the state of Illinois uh, with the union that we network with. Um, so my story is kind of short. Uh, that's what we do. I am the president of Associated Disadvantaged General Contractors, the owner of Lion Construction, in which we use to put these individuals out to work. And I'm also the president of Pembroke Hopkins Park Construction Outreach Program, which is our school that we use. All right, and once again, thank you for the privilege of being here and being able to speak today. And uh, it's my privilege now to um, bring our speaker in, Mr. Frederick Carter, with the president, being the president of Economic Commission. Wow. How long has it been? I'd like to thank Governor Prisker, Lieutenant General Stratton, Sonia Harper, and Senator Mr. Sims. I'm a little emotional about this moment because this is something we've been planning for a long time. We did it over a meal at our table about six to eight years ago, Sonia. And we've been consistently working towards making sure that black Americans are included in the food industry. Regardless of where they are, whether they're here in Pembroke Township, and that we are, in essence, a value change. We fed the world, and we're going to feed the world again. 
I also like to see that this bill has going to have a powerful impact on Pembroke Township because what this does allow us to execute our commitment to create a food accelerator at the Nestle building. We're going to create a food accelerator at the Nestle building that's going to allow us to generate micro business in the food sector emerging out of Pembroke Township, but we're inviting everybody to come. Food is the one common reality that everybody can relate to. Got to watch my time. I can do this all day. We all break bread. And the most common thread is what we put in our mouth. Every human being can contribute to that reality. And it's important now that we don't include, exclude no one because we have a food problem, everybody. We can pretend to say that we don't. We have a food problem. We're going to have to do more food closer to where we live. It's the state of Illinois, we spend over $60 billion a year. If we just channel 10% of that in a local supply chain, it would increase our tax revenues. It would increase monies available for us at the state level, community level, and it would generate abundance and wealth, not only in finance, but our health. And seeing that Pembroke, at one point in history, was the third largest producer of industrial hemp. That's the future, everybody. Plant-based industry is the future. Oil-based industries is only going to be there to support us to get there. But we are here and very grateful for our legislator. This is the most historical bill I've ever seen in my little short span here. And it came from the state of Illinois. I can't thank you all enough. We made history, everybody. <laughs> I know they're talking about the federal bill, but we actually did ours, okay? It's in action, and Pembroke is going to be a shining light, an asset in the generating abundance, prosperity, love, and support for our communities and our neighbors in the state. Thank you so much. I'd like to now introduce the person that really sourced this for me is Dr. Jafunza Wright, Carter. I had to say Carter. <laughs> uh, she's my half and sometimes my whole. And uh, it's her commitment that I'm standing here with you right now. And I like to acknowledge the women. If it wasn't for our women, I wouldn't be standing here. Okay? We got a lot of powerful women, and I'm humbled by that. So I'd like to introduce you, my mate, my partner, the president of Black Oak Center, Dr. Jafunza Wright. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's an honor to be here. We've got, we've made a lot of progress. We got a long way to go. Uh, we're going to celebrate where we are right now. And I want to um, literally th thank everyone, uh, Governor Pritzker, uh, Lieutenant Governor Juliana Stratton, so hardworking, Sonia, <laughs> and Senator Sims, and all of my fellow residents here in Pembroke Township. Uh, we are part of the inaugural R3 grant recipients. And so when you see our uh, folks, do we have any of our survey folks here? Please, can you raise your hand? So we, we actually have started our process of community-based economic development planning, having all of our fellow residents weigh in on what they want to see happen. And so please, if you make sure that you, uh, can you put up your hand again? 
and I think Oni is here somewhere. So we, they've got on yellow t-shirts, uh, hopefully somebody does. <laughs> okay, so um, please make sure that you weigh in and share what you wanna see happen. And um, we are very grateful in particular for the opportunity to have the African American disparities work done here. Because as um, Lieutenant Governor Stratton has shared, this is, I'll say that it is, not just that it was, it is still the largest black farming community north of the Mason-Dixon line. And all of us have the mission of doing what we have to do to restore the legacy and the heritage of black farming here on in perpetuity. Um, so I am looking forward to everyone participating. We actually have a Pembroke Farmland Restoration Program where uh, those who are having challenges with tax delinquency, you can actually get help to retain your land and not only to retain your land, but actually turn your land into a viable farm. And so you will be able to get your taxes paid for up to six years. And on, in that six years, people will be able to learn how to farm on your, the land that, you're lease, that we're leasing from you. And if you choose, when that six years is up, you can take it over and never have to worry about having enough money to pay your taxes. And then for those who uh, have been holding on to their land and their love and commitment for black farming, we have something for you too. We thank you. You know, your taxes are all paid up and you're just waiting for this young person to show up because maybe your children don't want nothing to do with it. But you're just praying that somebody that looks like you gonna show up and wanna do this, we got something for you too. So if you wanna lease your land to young people who want to learn how to farm, you can, we, we're ready for you to do that as well. And for those who really wanna start picking up, if you're like me and I, you know, my, my grandfather from Mississippi, I got out in that field, I looked up in the sky and I said, granddaddy, I see what you mean, I love this. Let somebody else see my patience, because <laughs> I could just be here all day. So if you're one of those kind of people where you, you, you love farming or you love working with the earth, but you don't know how to farm, we have a farm better technical assistance component so that everyone can get, and I just want to let you know I am not one of the instructors. We are bringing in top flight folks, Rodale Institute, Savannah Institute, the USDA, the University of Illinois Extension. And so you'll get the best of information, online curriculum, and you know we will be more than happy because we've got to get our troops together to be ready to feed Illinois and feed the region. Thank you so much. Good day, everyone. I want to say thank you to the governor and all of our dignitaries here today. Thank you so much for uh, coming in person to support this bill. You could have done so from Chicago, from Springfield. So I want to say thank you for coming in person to Hopkins Park, Pembroke Township to support this bill. I am Ever Ivy from Ivy League Farms, and my dad, who is 87 years old, is here with me today. My dad was a sharecropper in the South before uh, relocating here to Illinois, and him and my mom bought this land many years before I knew the value of owning land and many years before I knew the value of farming. Uh, in fact, I'm still learning the value of farming. Um, and right now to this day, my dad who is 87 can run circles around me out on the farmland. Uh, so I thank him. But when I think about where he started and where we are today and now with this bill um, and the equity that this bill 
um, I'm looking forward to it bringing um, and just what it means for the, the Pembroke Township and Village of Hopkins Park and what it means for black farmers. We've come a long way and we still have a long way to go. And so I thank you for supporting this bill and for all who worked to bring it to fruition. Uh, but I also look forward to the boots on the ground and the hands in the dirt support and I'm looking forward um, to just that continuing. We're looking forward to another great farm season where we'll, we'll, we'll be farming both industrial hemp and natural vegetables. Um, and so we're just excited. And again, I just want to say thank you so much for your support. And now I will bring back to the podium Governor J.B. Pritzker, who will take questions from the audience. Thanks, Everett. And happy to take questions from members of the media. Yes, sir. Do you look at the four pillars as maybe the renaissance of uh, a state that's going to level the playing field for minorities? It's the beginning of leveling the playing field. There's still so much more that needs to be done, but I have to say these are, are monumental leaps forward. I hope everybody understands that. Uh, this work was not done in a private room somewhere uh, only by the Black Caucus. Black Caucus led this effort, uh, but they brought it to the broader General Assembly and could not have passed it if they didn't have allies all across the state in the General Assembly and right here in the governor's office. And uh, they did just a phenomenal job. This really is going to lift up black families all across the state of Illinois. But, but let's be clear, as everybody has said who stood up here, there's much more work to be done and we'll continue to work on it year after year. Uh, you can't erase uh, 402 years of slavery in the United States. Uh, in with four bill with four pillars, you can't. Uh, there's still much more work to be done, and I hope to be a partner with everybody behind me and so many others in the General Assembly in getting that work done. Thank you.